Hello, welcome to this video. So, some of you out there may have just gotten into Warhammer 40k as a result of 8th edition. Some of you have been in, you know, gotten into different game systems recently or maybe not. And you still have, or now have, all of these models that are either bare plastic or metal. Or sit there unpainted. Now, I'm going to suggest that it's actually extremely easy to go for it a good tabletop paint job. A tabletop is really simple. Okay, Look around at um, different kind of conventions or tournament formats and all that's required is three different colors and a base. The base painted. Okay, Nothing fancy. So honestly I think we should be able to do this. Start with uh, something simple and let's charge in, get all our paint models painted. It won't take that long to do just a tabletop standard we're not talking fancy techniques, fancy paints, fancy anything. We're just talking very basic. But the difference will be tremendous. You'll actually be able to, you know, when you look at your models on the table, they'll look like an army, not just a bunch of model plastic pieces on the table. It'll almost become more cinematic. So, let's head down to the workbench, and I'll kind of walk through what I mean. All right? See you in a second. All right, so you've got your gray plastic minis all set. You're ready to play. But then, you know, you've seen models on the websites or forums or whatever, and they're all these really well-painted, highly detailed models with all these different painting techniques used, lots of different colors. And your buddies at the game store or the game, where, wherever you play, they've got painted armies that are really nice. And you kind of, I don't know about you, but I know I felt discouraged the first time I, you know, faced that. So... I think the first thing you want to do is just don't worry about colors yet. Don't worry about primers or brushes or any of these cool things. Just set your expectations a little differently. Realize that you don't have to have a model painted up this nice in order to play the game. <clears throat> yeah, this looks really cool, but you're not going to be holding the miniatures and you know at arm's length and, or even closer, you know, 12 inches away to really look at all the detail. You're going to be playing it on a tabletop and they'll be like three feet away so you don't need something that looks this good matter of fact if you were to take this model and think about what it looks like on the tabletop in reality you're going to be viewing it from like this far away how much detail you're really going to see do you really need all that detail <clears throat> or do you just need the general impression at first Okay, so that's what we want to talk about today is let's reset our expectations. So let's avoid, you know, let's forget about someone that's really, really well painted like this. And let's focus on a couple different models. Some examples here. This is where I like to paint my models to. Um, this is way more than just tabletop. I mean, this is, <clears throat> I go, I've got lots of colors. Lots of uh, shading and and what have you. So there's a bolt action mini. Here's a guardsman. Three different colors on the uniform, plus the leather and silver highlights and gold highlights. A black rifle, flesh color. So there's what like six different colors in that. And over here, there's an orc. He's got a couple different. This orc's got a couple different colors on the gun, ammunition, his. Outfit, of course, he's green, and I got some highlighting going on there, so a lot, <clears throat> a lot of detail. But again, you don't need to go this level. But let's just say this is where you will want your army to be at that point. You don't have to start at that level. You can always keep this in mind as your goal, but you don't need to finish all your models to this level in order to play with them. So let's figure out how to do just tabletop standard on our way to doing these models. Okay, so here are a bunch of models I've got. Uh, bolt action, British soldier, an orc, a uh, Imperial Guardsman, and a Dark Eldar that I've already started. Okay, so the first thing I need is brushes. Now, you don't need high-end brushes, artist brushes. Uh, you know, the, the three, four, five dollar <laughs> uh, or higher versions. But, you know, you do need some nice ones uh, with soft bristles. Uh, they could be firm, but they should be soft. 
Now, <clears throat> ranging in size from you know small to medium, you don't need anything huge. You know, here's a uh, the smallest one. I think it's a zero. The brushes, the brushes are only like a quarter inch long. The rest are you know three inch, sorry three eighths of an inch or so. And the whole point here is to have the just the ones you need to do your base uh, three color uh, or tabletop standard. So first thing is a little quick note about brush sizes. Um, they're numbered. This one's triple zero. That means that's basically a small one. Zero, 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 and sorry, zero, double zero, and triple zero are progressively smaller. Uh, but then you got one, two, three, four, five, uh, and, and higher as far as larger brush numbers go. And so think in terms of, you know, between triple zero and three or four. That's really all you need. The larger the brush, the easier it'll be to base coat your stuff. And the smaller ones like this will be easier to pick out the smaller areas that you'll want to color differently. So let's take a look now at the first step of painting. Okay, the first thing you want to do is prime. Now, there's a lot of different ways to prime models. I'm oh, sorry, a lot of different approaches as far as color. Personally, I like going with a, a gray. Just overall, that's my favorite way of doing it. Now, however, you don't need to go with gray. You can go with uh, black, white, or any other color. Uh, but it should be a primer. <clears throat> so, this is a Krylon. I use Krylon a lot. Uh, but again, for blacks, grays, and whites. Uh, I would suggest not getting the flat. I would suggest actually more of a satin finish as a primer. But, uh, if you do a flat, that'll work too. Uh, so black is good unless you're going to paint your model with higher color or bright colors. Uh, gray is good neutral tone. White would be when you want to paint bright colors. The other opportunity, though, is to actually get something like Army Painter, where they have a, the actual paint primer. is co It's colored. This particular one is skeleton bone, and it's you can actually paint your entire army the base color by using the primer alone. I recommend this. Now, this is much more expensive than the Krylon, but I honestly think you get more models done for the primer or the primer painter than you do for the Krylon. Uh, probably not on the exact, you know, like this, is a, uh, this is like a $6 can, this is like a $16 can, so I don't think you're getting three times as many models painted with this, but uh, it's a, th I do prefer using the Army Painter uh, on several of my models because it has a good base color that uh, matches what I'm trying to work on, especially skin colors and what have you. <clears throat> so, so here I've got Bolt Action uh, Soldier, British Soldier, painted in the Army Painter Skeleton Bone. An Orc painted up with uh, just, you know, a white type primer. In black I've got a Guardsman. And I've also have started a uh, model that's Dark Eldar with, it's already painted or based with a gray. Okay, so you know, when you think about tabletop standard, what you're looking for is usually a three color minimum and a painted base. So you really need at least three colors, maybe four. Uh, it's nice to have a, a, a different color for the base, so we'll call it four colors for now. It doesn't matter what paint brand you use, really. Um, th with some exceptions, there are some paints that aren't as good as others. I would avoid the testers enamel in the small quarter ounce jars. Uh, there are like Anita's here. Um, generally, I don't particularly care for the way this paint applies. Unfortunately, I can't find a different uh, company that has the kind of color I'm looking for here cheaply. Um, I do like Delta's Ceram Coat though. It's, that is a very cheap. You know, I think two dollars a bottle. It's two fluid ounces, so it's a dollar an ounce, compared to Citadel, which is you know, what is it, a half ounce or something like that. You get significantly more paint for your money, considering this costs probably twice what this costs, almost. So, um, don't let cost be your your uh, guide. Let the color be your guide. So, if the colors you want are available in Citadel, go for Citadel. If they're available in Vallejo, get Vallejo. If they're available in ceramic uh, ceramic coat, go for it. That's how you can 
you know, get the model colors you want on the tabletop. Okay, so the first thing you need to do is, for your model, or your army, figure what three colors you're going to use. Let's look at the orc real quick. Alright, so I've seen the green, so I'm going to go with Christmas green for his skin. He's got hair, um, looks like, you know, a, a jacket or a shirt, and then he's got pants and a boot. So, I figure... Let's do, we can do black hair, black boots. I'll use a charcoal color. That's a little bit less uh, black than uh, black is. And then we'll use dark brown for the rest of his clothing. <clears throat> so there's the three for the orc. For my British soldier, I'm going with scale modeling kind of stuff. So flesh, I'll use flat flesh for his skin. British or English uniform for the bulk of his color. And for the helmet, which has got hessian strips on it and what have you, I'm going to use... Uh, Russian uniform. Okay, so with my guardsman, uh, I'm going to start with olive green, uh, trail tan for the pants, and a dark flesh for his skin. Now, real quick note here, I wanna, I'm going to reinforce this concept. Notice that this model also has a dark green and also has leather pouches that are brown, and the boots are brown. You can do that later. You don't have to do it right now. Okay, so we're going for a tabletop standard, so at least it gets a painted army on the table, looks nice. You'll be able to use the base colors here, the three I've chosen, and then build on that if you feel like you want to afterward, instead of having to repaint it, you know, from scratch. All right, now I've already done some work on these dark Eldar here. This one was base coated or primed black and base coated with a red on his armor. And what I'm basically going to use is Balthazar Gold on some of the highlights and pauldrons and, and uh, spikes. That will be the third color, right? For this guy, I'm going to use the same color for the gun and his pauldrons. And I'll, we'll talk about the, next, the third color as well. Um, okay, now that everything's painted, you know, at least primed. So what we'll do is we're going to go ahead and just start with the base coat. Okay, but not over necessarily the whole model. Here's the orc. I don't want to be painting everything on him the same color. So let's just do skin first. So I get my green out. Pick a medium sized brush. Okay, so the green's on there, that's all it took. Now, here's one of the advantages of using a light base coat primer, is, as you can see on the his face, the higher edges are basically auto-highlight. So, that's one way to kind of cheat in that space. So, there's the green. Let's go on to the, uh, our British soldier here. Alright, so, for him to use English uniform, because that's mostly what he's going to be. <clears throat> One color. Now let's go on to the guardsman. Okay, so I'm going to start with here, is I'm going to go ahead and paint his trousers. Uh, start with the lowest level of... Uh, equipment or clothing. Okay. All right, so bingo, that's all it takes. Just quick application. And you can do this with a few models at a time. Take one unit at a time and just, you know, 10 guys or whatever. And just apply the paint. Then you gotta let it dry. Okay, now the paint's dried, we're gonna go ahead and take out a second coat, or a second paint color. So I figure for the orc, let's go ahead and do the brown. Here, 
top he's got a little knot to uh, hold his hair together. So here you're going to be a little careful and make sure you don't get the paint on the skin. Okay, but it's okay to get a little bit on the hair. Alright, so there you go. So we'll set him aside to dry. Okay, now for the human figures, we're going to do the the, uh, the flesh tones. Always good to get the those deep things taken care of. So we've got the two different paints here. A Delta ceramic coat, uh, dark flesh, and a flat flesh for Vallejo. So it's not really uh, difficult in both cases. It's a very little bit of work. What I'll do is I'll use a small brush. Uh, here is the triple zero. All right, so that's him. All right, so very, very simple. Now here his helmet does have a chin strap, but again, we're not worried about the details right now. All right, so there's hands and face. Alright, now I just saw I've done the uh, base color for for this model and base and the rest of the for this. So now it's, we're going to go on a third color for each of these. For uh, We have a second, uh, I'll show you what we're going to do with the third color on this, but first we're going to go with the second color. It's the same here, we're going to use the both as our gold. Okay. And I'm just going to pick some details on this model, and we're going to paint the gun, uh, as well as the pauldrons on his shoulders. Okay. Okay, here you do want to be start being careful. There are detail parts that you, that you need to hit that you don't, and you do not want to get it on the base coat. Okay. Now here we're just gonna hit the the spines. All right, here we go. So that model has three colors on it. Now what we've got to deal with is the third color. So let's take a quick look. <clears throat> Here we've got brown and green. Let's go ahead and do the black now. A black jacket and gloves and boots, as well as some hair. Now I'm using a kind of a charcoal color. It looks a lot grayer on the my video screen here than it does when it's dry, but uh, it is a nice dark very dark gray so it's a faded black which I think would be very appropriate for uh, beat up leather Right, we'll leave that to dry so I can hold on to the boots in a little bit. Okay, for my bolt action figure, I want to paint his helmet um, kind of Russian green because it's got that Hessian netting over the top of it. So that's okay. boom. That's all I need to do with him. 
All right, now finally our Imperial Guardsman. Okay, well the paint dries, the second, the third color is paint dry on the uh, Guardsman and the Orc. <clears throat> We're going to go ahead and show you the third color, if you will, for this. And this is going to be very, very straightforward. There's a hose here, basically to an energy pack. And that's where we're going to paint that. I actually want to go with a, a, a deep, dark black. Okay, so there's a three color painted model. Dark color. Now, you may not like the particular scheme, and that's entirely okay. I'm going after a particular uh, color pattern for this mod, this unit, so hence the, the color scheme it's got. But I think that that's, that's definitely tabletop ready as far as having three colors, completely base coated, make sure there's no plastic showing. Okay. All right, so let's we'll let the other colors dry, and we'll, we'll show you the next step. Okay, so let the paint dry when I put a couple or finish the orcs black there. And the last step really was to apply a color to the base. Now, this is a model, a bold action model that I have not finished yet, as far as the base goes. The model is completely painted. You'll notice the base is still painted. It's painted an earth color. This one I went ahead and used a uh, English U color, and same one on here. You want to pick a base color that will just complement the color scheme you've got and kind of match the terrain, or be a good um, under base undercoat for what terrain or basing materials you'll eventually want to put on there. So if you're going to have something more uh, vegetative, you know, like grasses and such. Uh, You'll go with something brown, um, kind of earth brown, or green like this. For example, this will be mostly covered with uh, flock and static grass, but any bare spots will look like bare earth. Here, I'm going for just a regular English U green color, so that even the bare areas will be at least green. Now, when it comes to you, oops. Models like this, you just want to look good on the, the bike itself. So here is just throw it on the bike. All right, and that's what it looks like. Okay. Now compare him to this. He may not be as detailed with all the different kind of colors. There's, like I said, a lot of colors in there, but he's... He looks good enough for the tabletop, so he's ready to go. The guardsman, all set to go. He looks good just as as is. You know, he has the tan, olive, and flesh tones with the black primer on the binoculars. Doesn't look a lot different from him, except for the dark green armor that's there. But again, all I need to do is, after a bit, go in and paint up the, the boots and the dark armor and the belts and stuff like that, adding colors. So, But he's ready for the tabletop, as is now. Here's my two bolt-action figures. Not much difference between them as far as the, the colors. Obviously, there's more detail on him, but he looks just as good now. Ready for the tabletop. It won't just be a single colored or metal army on the table. And of course, there are Dark Eldar ready to go. All right, so that's all it takes really to do a quick, legit tabletop standard bear army. It Get rid of the plastic, jump in with this. It'll make your battles look a little more cinematic. 
thematic, it'll look good, it'll feel good, you'll have a lot, I think you'll have more fun and you'll enjoy the games a lot more. You don't have to be an expert at it, just start with the basic colors, the basic three on the larger areas. And if you want to take it to the next level, you can take those models and instead of stripping them, you can just continue painting them from there. Like I said with my guardsmen, I will simply add the dark green, the black green uh, hard armor, carapace armor, brown boots, brown belt, and what else? He doesn't have grenades, so. And I'll probably do some washes and highlights. And that's the beauty of this is they're ready for the tabletop now, but they're ready to be taken to the next level as well. And you'll probably want to do that with your characters, your special guys, but it doesn't have to be every guy in the army. So there you go. So hopefully this inspires you to get started. Now that you're into a brand new game, you've got some models, now you can get them painted relatively easily and quickly. It won't take but a few minutes per model to get it all done. In, in an evening, with just base three colors and a base the base painted, you should easily be able to get uh, 10, 20 models done. Because again, you're not going for any real special fancy effects. All right. Hope this helps. Now if you got friends who have got armies of gray plastic or just base primer, share them this with share this uh, video with them and maybe this will inspire them to get moved on to their next step in the painting and get those models ready for the tabletop so they look really good. Alright, so thanks a lot for sticking with me. Comment below, share, like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.